All right, let's go, let's go through this real quick. Right, so here's the, here's the part we're gonna make so we can do a drawing. I'm gonna close it up real quick uh, so we can make it. Let me check the dimensions. All right, so I'm gonna go new, I'm just gonna make the part so I have the same thing you guys do. So I'm gonna do new part, right? And then I'm gonna go start 2D sketch. I'm gonna pick a plane, right? Uh, hopefully everybody, when you built this, you attached it to the origin. That's super good. Also remember you can go straight out and hit five, enter. We just did this a minute ago. And then we can go up, straight up one inch, not 14, one. Oh my God, I just did 11. Let's do that again. One inch over two, down 0.5. And this was all on the drawing and then over two and then up. And then if we let that, if we let that highlight there with that line that pops up, then it's going to be on the same line and down. Finish, fully constrained, finish, extrude. We're gonna go three inches right here. All right now all we gotta do is the hole. Go to that face. Pick a circle, drop the circle in. All right, dimension, circle swap one inch. One inch in diameter. Now we've, we've sized it, so we must now locate it. And it is one in, is it one inch this way or inch and a half this way? One inch this way and is an inch and a half that way. Finish, extrude. I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna go through all, I'm gonna hit okay, and now I'm done, right? Boom, easy peasy. Don't know why it took us 10 minutes. That was like 30 seconds. I've also done this for 20 years. That might be the difference. Right? Uh, by the way, you guys are doing really, really good uh, to have got that done in 10 minutes after only like, you know, three days of intense CAD practice to do that on your own. Um, so let's go ahead and save it. This next part does not work unless you save it. I am gonna call mine junk, right? Because I, I've already got a copy from earlier this morning because this is like the fourth time I've done this part. So I'm gonna call mine junk. You can call it whatever you want. Okay, as you're following along, right, we're gonna go someplace we've never been before, right, because we're gonna go over to home, right, and then we're gonna say new, and since we've been, we talked about drawings yesterday, what do we think we're gonna talk about today? What are we gonna make, right? We're gonna go to drawings. Okay, here's the thing about the default Autodesk Inventor drawing file. It is a D size drawing, right? Which is roughly three foot by four foot, I think, right? It's huge, right? And if you go to put dimensions on anything, all the dimensions are gonna be really, really tiny, right? Because it's, it's assuming you're about to print this on a three foot by four foot piece of paper, right? Or roughly something the size of the flag on my wall over there, right? I think that's three by five, but you kind of get my point, right? It's much too big. So we're going to take a few notes, right? In order to uh, learn how to like write down so we can look it back up for how to switch this over to the correct size each and every time we need to do that, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is our engineering notebooks, right? Let's say something like how to do a new drawing or set up a new drawing. Maybe that's a better title, set up a new drawing. So write that in your engineering notebook. And then step number one, right, is right click sheet and hit edit sheet. And then the next thing you're going to do, right, step two is you're going to change it from D to B. Now B is a generally a good size. It's 11 by 17, right? It's still too big to print. So in your engineering notebooks, 
where you, after you say, hey, switch it to B, I would add the note unless you need to print, and if you need to print, change it to A. Right, so and that because we, all of our printers are 11 by 17, which is A size, all right? But we're gonna go B because B matches the, uh, the aspect ratio of our computer monitors really, really well and everything fits pretty good. So change it to B and then you'll notice that the size changes. All right, next thing we need to do, all right? I don't remember what step we're on. Whatever the next step is, next step, right? Find where it says ANSI large, right click and delete. Then that winds up deleting our title block. And we did that because it still had the super large title block on it. Okay, so now we're gonna hit plus on the, the plus next to drawing resources, the plus next to title blocks, because that's what we're gonna put in, and then we're gonna double click ANSI A. And that will put in the smaller title block. And then if you're smart, you will save this and call it like default drawing. And then whenever you need to do a drawing, open this one up, okay? So that's what I would do. That way you don't have to do this step every single time. But you know, normally what I wind up doing is I wind up saving over my default file and putting something into it. Um, so, you know, knowing how to do this step is important. Okay, so, we now have a drawing, right? You've also got, you've also got your file still up, right? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna wind up associating this file with this drawing, okay? Um, and that way, cool things will happen. Like if I ever go and change this part, then Inventor will automatically update my drawing. Uh, it's really quite powerful, all right? So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hit base. Right, and this is what associates it. If you only have a part up, right, you've got one part open, right, it will find it and throw it in like this. If you don't, if you have more than one part or no parts, you may have to select which one, right, you could, with this down arrow, or you may have to hit that button there and then find it, right? All right, but yours probably comes up as it is, depending on how you constructed it, it may look like that, okay? So if it looks like that, look at your view cube, right? And then click the little triangles until you get the view that looks like that, right? So the little triangles that pop up, if you pick them, right, it will move your item around. So pick that, because that is the proper front view. All right, once you have that, go straight up, and we're gonna, and then click. That's gonna drop in your top view. Go straight to the right and click. That's gonna drop in your left view. And then go out of 45, and this is the cool one, right? And click, and it will drop in your isometric. And once you have that, hit okay. Okay, then, Right, it's probably not in a good position for you. So notice when you get close, this red dashed line pops up, right? When it pops up, click on the red line and drag. I would start with the front view. The front view you can move all around. However, the top view can only go up and down and the right view can only go left and right because those are tied to the front view. They must be aligned with the front view. All right, so if you need to, if you need to reposition greatly, start the front view and then move the others. All right, and then same thing here, click on the red box, you can drag in the isometric. One of the other things you can do is if you go over to the red box, right, and double click, all right, it will bring up the option window, and just on the isometric, click this button that says shaded, right, and it will turn that shaded 
for the record, you never ever shade the multi views. Never shade front, top, right. Only shade the isometric. Oh. All right, so now we're to the fun part, right? Uh, kind of, sort of, right? In this view, is this view bringing a whole lot to the table? No. Not really, right? Uh, one of the rules of dimensioning is if the view is not needed, right, and you're wind up, because we're not going to have any dimensions on this, right? If the view is not needed, then get rid of it. So let's right click, right, and then hit delete, right? And it's going to say, do you want to delete the view? Yes. Get rid of it. Right, so right click on the red and then hit delete. Now we're to the fun part where we start adding in dimensions, all right? So everybody just watch real quick, right? I'm going to go to annotate. I'm going to hit dimension. You can also do this with the D key. That's the shortcut, right? And then I'm always going to start every single time I do a drawing. I'm going to start with how wide is it? How tall is it? Right, and by the way, these are get these get put in exactly like uh, the dimensions and sketches, so it's nothing new. And then, how deep is it? Right. Notice, I'm going to come over here and line these two up. I may have went too far out, but we can we can move them in. But they're going to be lined up. Right. That is just that helps with the whole viewing uh, to keep it nice and neat. We're going to line those up. This will snap into place when you get close. All right. Then what I do, once I've done, these are called overall dimensions. How wide, how tall, how deep, those are called overall dimensions. Once I have those, then I go through, starting with my front view, right? Because the most of the, most of the dimensions should be on your front view. And then I'm gonna say dimension, right? And I'm gonna get all my verticals. In this case, I'll do that one. All right, and then I will also do this one. So there's the other vertical. So I've done that vertical, that vertical, that vertical, and that vertical. Hey, I know I've done them all, right? I could do this, right? But what's the problem? Well, I mean, the two, the two lines I clicked are, but what did I talk about yesterday? Right? We're closing the chain. And for manufacturing, they like the chain to not be closed. Right? So we're going to leave that one open. I've got everything dimensioned. Do I have anything to dimension in my vertical here? For, for depth. Right? Do, have I done all the horizontal lines? No. Right? Have I done this one? No. no. Right? So I could totally do this. Right, and it's absolutely 100% correct. But what is slightly easier to see? If I slide that over, right, and now I don't have my, my dimension lines, the extension lines going through my part, right? That is slightly easier to understand. Both would be right. I like this one better because it's a little bit easier to understand. All right, and then all I have is the hole up here. I've got the depth. I need to throw in my hole. The holes are a little different, right? What did we talk about yesterday that the hole needs? Looks like a plus in the middle. Right, it's the center of the circle and it's called the center mark. So find on your screen the center mark, it's right here, All right, And then click the circle. Now, whenever you do, whenever you do a center mark, you're going to go to your other views and then you're going to add in the center line. All right. So I did a center mark. So I need to come down here and add my center line for this view, which is basically what these headlines are showing me. So I'm going to go here. 
to center line bisector, which is a fancy word for find me the middle. That's what bisector means, find the middle, right? And so I'm going to click this line, which is one side of the hole. And I'm going to click this line, which is the other side of the hole. And then it will bisect that and grab me the middle and put me a center line in there. All right, so this tells me that this is not a square hole. This is a round hole because it has a center line. Okay. To locate the circle, right, I am not going to do any dimensions to hidden lines. That's a big no-no. One of the rules, no dimension lines to hidden lines, right? So we're going to come up here, right, and we got to say how far up from here to here, how far up do I come, and then how far over do I come, all right? And as soon as I do that, right, I have it fully dimensioned. The only other thing I might want to add is I can come to text, right, and I'm going to write in all caps, right, something like note, all dimensions in millimeters, right, or in our case, inches, right? And then normally this is also where, the, where you would say material, right, uh, you know, the material is, you know, 60, 61, aluminum, you know, with a T, you know, I don't know, T0, T1, T0 finish. D-I-Z-E, cannot, cannot type today. And then all you need to do then at that point is go ahead and give it a save, right? And I'm going to save this as junk, right? Because I have several copies of this. This being the fourth time I've done it today. But watch this on the screen real quick. I'm going to go back to my original junk part. I'm going to grab, go right click, edit sketch, go into my circle. And I'm going to say, you know what? This needs to be 0.5. The, cert, the hole is not the correct size. So I'm going to change that to half inch. And you don't have to do this. I'm just showing you. Now when I jump back, what happens? Everything updates. Like, it's super cool. Right? Uh, anyway, that's, that's the most basic drawing. The only thing we have forgotten is filling out the title block. Right? And I'll, I'll cover this later. But I'm videoing this, so I want to get this in the video. Right? We're going to go file uh, I properties. And then in the summary, right, we're going to change our name, right, to be all caps because that's what we do. We give it a title, and this is junk block, right. Uh, and then we come over here to project, right, we're going to say, hey, our part number is, and then because we're high school students, we just, we just make up a number because we don't have a... Uh, we don't have a drawing system. Uh, and then we're going to say revision is always A for the first release, and then the second release is B, and so forth and so on. And then we hit OK. And then notice all this populates, right? So our title block gets populated, and then that's it, right? But we'll cover that again. I just want to get that in the video that I'm currently making.